Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AxesTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody is healthy. That's the first and foremost. A uh, lot of news today to digest, uh, especially in the tri-state area here, the New Jersey, New York, Connecticut area. All three governors have now implemented uh, a curfew, right? A curfew. I think as of tomorrow, I believe restaurants, uh, bars, um, gyms are all going to be uh, closed by eight o'clock, okay? Uh, there is no uh, sitting in restaurants. If you have a drive-through, that's that's fine. Again, guys, stay at home. I, what I saw over the weekend, it was just amazing. You go through like on Instagram or on Facebook and you see people in restaurants and bars. I, like, I, I just don't understand what's going on through their heads. It's the most amazing part. Uh, and then they're shocked that all this is going on. You, you got to stay home, okay? You got to stay home. You have to be disciplined enough uh, to get your priorities straight, okay? There's no party out there, okay? There's nobody that is going to change your life in these type of conditions if you die, okay? Stay at home, okay? Buy enough food. Put yourself in a situation that you are set up for weeks. Uh, there's plenty of uh, delivery services right now. They're still delivering food. Uh, Amazon, again, Amazon, you have to order kind of bi-weekly. So I've, uh, we have now on rotation, we have Amazon, we have uh, Fresh Direct. I don't know if Fresh Direct is everywhere. And uh, King Supermarket, literally on rotation. So King Supermarket's coming tomorrow. Last, uh, last week, we got Amazon for food delivery. Next week, we got Amazon again. So there's a way to get around things. Uh, the, 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 there is a bright side to all this. Uh, in the last, like several weeks uh i've spent ridiculous amount of quality time with my family i played a lot of basketball in my driveway we played um you know we've we've been throwing football around there's a lot of stuff to do you get beautiful weather so you're not this isn't a death sentence you're not you're not sitting at home in a, in a room uh you know taking little <laughs> little breaths okay you, you could still live your life but you have to live your life responsibly so you know you get this news that comes out that uh we are going into some sort of um curfew okay uh eventually there will be uh in my opinion I, an, an emergency lockdown everywhere i think the, the mayor of san francisco uh said something this afternoon as well so it, look it's going to get worse before it gets better again i still believe we're still in the really really early innings of this uh but again if everybody just does their part and stays home we're going to be okay we'll get through this uh trump came out three o'clock uh had some positive things about the airline sector, but he also did say he believes that this virus could still be around till August. I, I get it. I mean, of course it could still be around till August. I don't believe for a second that warmer weather is going to uh, be the deciding factor that this thing it goes away. Again, look at Brazil. Look how many cases uh, Brazil has. So the moral of the story is, look, it, it's, 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 it's a nervous time for everybody. But again, it's not a death sentence. We're all in this in together, whether you're a new trader uh, an experienced trader, whatever the case may be, we're all in this together. It's time to help each other out and help ourselves out and putting ourselves in a position that we are trading a year from now, not just because we're making prudent decisions in the stock market, because damn it, we're alive, okay? So before you're thinking about calling your buddies and having a damn play date, okay, right? Or go to a bar or something, for God's sake, you know, just stay home, you know, stay home, watch Netflix, Relax, go for walks. There's plenty of things to occupy your time. You have to be a responsible adult. It's just, it's just the reality. Um, on the, on the trading aspect, before we kind of go into the day, and again, you trade long enough, you see everything. Three thousand point move uh, in the Dow again. To, to, to think about the idea of a thousand points on the Nasdaq is a lot, right? Is it's absolutely a lot. Uh, but the one thing that's on the table right now, okay, is definitely. Because uh, the government, again, they're, they're, the feed, the, the hopes is something is going to stick. And right now, the Fed is throwing money at the problem. Sometimes throwing money at the problem is the right thing to do. Because, again, in my opinion, again, just a humble opinion, if, we didn't, if the big banks didn't get bailed out, 
in 2009, we wouldn't be sitting here. It was financial arm. Again, you can say what you want, but it, the government did their job. Now, again, not every time can you be the feasible thing to do, throw money at the problem. You know, the Fed is coming in with trillions of dollars of backstop. That's all great. That sounds fantastic. The problem is this is not a problem we throw money. This is this is a health problem, okay? You can you can bail out companies to the end of the world. It's great on the surface for the people who survive, but again, if you are exposed and you are unfortunately one of the elderly, whatever the case may be, would have upper respiratory problems, unfortunately, no Fed, you know, induced capital is gonna help you out. So that's the biggest difference between uh, throwing the money at a problem during the mortgage mess or throwing money at the problem during a health Pan, uh, pandemic and it's very very important to understand that um one thing that is on the table again because they're trying to explore all their avenues all their outs and the one thing that is going to be on the table if it hasn't been on the table already to kind of ban short selling if you guys remember you're going back to uh 2008 okay uh short selling was banned um, and it was banned on, I forgot how many, I, I think it was all the financials. I think it was all the financials that were banned because it was huge uh, bear raids going on uh, during that time. And you also had uh, the ability that you couldn't even short sale the spies. Okay, that's how aggressive it got because they wanted some sort of backstop. And the most important part, okay, the most important part of that, they wanted some sort of stability. Some sort of stability finally came. There was a buffer and things kind of slowed down the volatility and things started kind of leveling out until we finally had the generational low of November of 2009. Are we there yet? No, we're not. But here's the good news, right? Here at least is the good news. So we've been talking about, and this is a weekly chart, okay? Weekly chart on the queues. And we've been talking about um, this 160 level, 160 level on the queues, which again, if you go back to one, two, three, four, five days ago, the queues were at 240. Okay. We're having this conversation today at 169. Okay. The 160 level, I'm very, very curious about this level for tomorrow. Okay. This is the weekly trend line. Okay. This is, this, there's nothing left that's else to talk about. This is the weekly trend line. I would like to see if there is another gap down in the market. And again, for anybody who, again, is complaining about, oh my God, I can't believe this, my portfolio is bleeding. Again, there's no, there's no rule that says you have to be long stocks. Okay? Again, where is the rules? And by the way, there is a button next to your buy button. There's a short button. You could trade that as well. So again, there is no, you know, there is, nobody's sitting there and saying, oh my God, I, can't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You don't need to be long stocks. Okay. You don't need to be long stocks in a, in a, in a global virus pandemic. You don't need to. Okay. And you could trade both sides of the market. It's allowed. Trust me. You're not going to be called names. Uh, if you short stocks, it's okay. It's, 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 you know, no, don't let anybody tell you you're not allowed to short stocks. You're allowed to short stocks. That's the whole point. You could trade both sides of the market. But again, I'd like to see what happens tomorrow. Uh, if we do gap down and test this 160 level, because again, if we can gap down to this 160 level, and kind of reclaim it, right? Reclaim this 160, 161 area. There could be, with all the stuff that's still going on, we actually could see a multi-day rally, okay? Just from the point of a technical buffer, right? Not, not Fed imposed, not anything else, just from a technical buffer. And if you look at the chart, it, it really does make sense, right? If it really does make sense, this is the bottom of the chart. So in my point of view, I think if they go through it, remount it, you could get a couple of days uh, worth of a good bounces. Again, you know, 1,000 points, 2,000 points. Uh, again, right now, for me mentally, and I, I think I can speak for a lot of people, I think when the market now gabs down eight, 900 points, we're almost numb to it. And that's, and that's what the overall global market community needs to do. Eventually, we have to just get numb. But when you turn around and you have 3,000 points in the Dow, yeah, it's a new, you know, it's a new, uh, it's a new frontier, right? When you have 1,000 points on the NASDAQ, oh, yeah, I get it, okay? Uh, but the one thing, again, you know, we, we've been in a broken record, the value every single day. I mean, I mean, if you've been watching this video for the last three weeks, a month, it's the same thing. I've been saying every single day, and the, 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 the process doesn't change, the game plan doesn't change. Every single time we get a gap down, okay, 800, 900 points, 1,000 points, the, today we gap down, seven percent we were you know the curbs uh the, the tra trading halls kicked in right at the open right right at the open we were down over seven percent of the spies so you don't need to have exposure overnight okay there's there's plenty of opportunities both long and short that you can take you know participate again do i have all the answers absolutely not i figured out what's working for me i figured out what's working for us 
uh, in the PS60 community, we, we, you know, we have a very specific game plan every single day, and it's exactly the same thing. It's, it's not deviating. Again, guys, for all you guys who are watching this the first time around, when a stock market gabs down, especially that aggressively, 900 points, 7 8%, right? You are getting 95% of the average true move for that stock pre-market. Everybody's getting rid of stock. Anybody who's long overnight and just say one more night, one more night, one more night, they're getting just hammered. They're going to be out of the stocks, okay? And what that does, it starts creating channels back to the upside. And once these channels get to the upside, you, we see this every day. You're getting two, three times a day that we're getting a two, three, 400 point rally off the bottom. Channels are confirming and they're making really, really big moves. So if you're looking at charts, and I said this, um, and I said this uh, over the weekend, there's no point to look at charts right now. Every stock is compromised. Every chart is damaged, it, you know, everything, okay? Everything is relied upon channels, news, headlines, and confirmation, and that's it. And, and, if, and again, I, like I've been saying this for this whole time, if you're a new trader and you just started in the last year or two years or three years, this is just not for you, okay? This is just not for you. Again, if you're having problems in a bull market, again, how do you think you're gonna make hay in this, okay? There's nothing wrong to sitting out. Again, nobody's gonna feel uh, any type of way against you. Nobody's gonna look at you funny. The point is stay around, be in business, get the, you know, get the experience under your belt. So God forbid this happens 15, 20, 30 years from now again, Okay, at least you could identify, hey, wait a minute, this is kind of similar to what I went through during the co corona, uh, corona collapse, as the CNBC named it. Um, and, you know, I'm smarter for it. And that's what we're all trying to do is just trying to be smarter, calmer, more adult, proceed with caution type of traders, and including myself. And so far, we're getting some pretty good value uh, every single day. So uh, let's talk about today. Again, we saw, you know, we talked about this. Uh, this morning at Morning Strategy, here was kind of my little notes uh, on the Twitter feed. And I said, look, value again each day is on the long side, okay? Um, you know, we just, that's what it is. Every, you know, every day is on the long side. You know, let's look for sneaky areas for cash flow when the futures spike. Stay patient. Uh, you know, Tesla was a phenomenal trade. The funny thing is, I actually started the day, I actually started the day, my first trade I lost money on. It. This was actually the first one. This was actually the first one who triggered. So NVIDIA triggered at 217, put in a high of like 219 or so, right? Um, I got long, I got long, where the hell did I get long? I got long an, a little bit under, where the hell did I get long? I don't remember now. I got long, um, oh, 218. I, I got long around the 218 area. It goes up a dollar, right? I thought it was gonna go that up like to 221, 222. It goes up a dollar and then it just futures stall out. They crash down. I wound up losing a dollar seventy five in the trade. I said, okay, no big deal, right? No big deal. It is what it is. I lost some money on it. Um, it is what it is. So my next trade, uh, I'm sitting there waiting, waiting. And I started really looking at Tesla. T Tesla was getting uh, very, very strong. And there was actually a pivot that we got long before the, the 480. Everybody see this thing right here? 480 needs to build. Right, so hold on, let me show you this, let me show you this, let me show you this. So, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Yeah, here, see, here it is. So I go, this is the levels it needs to watch, okay? It needs to reclaim, 476, 480, 484. These are the first four levels. So I got long on the second entry, 477, and Tesla exploded, okay? I'm talking about absolutely exploded. Uh, so here are the pivots, right? Here are the pivots right here. Here is the, here is the 76, right? Here is the 676, 77. Here is the 80, and the damn thing just absolutely went nuts. Went up to 495. Again, this is my point. You know, it gabs down, right? It gabs down, starts forming channels, and once it confirms the channel, it goes to the next supply zone. Great move, great, great move on, uh, great move on Tesla. And then they started getting really aggressive. For all you guys who do trade beta, and you traded these things this morning. I mean, there was um, phenomenal moves, okay? Absolutely phenomenal moves. And this is why, again, process in this type of market is super duper important. Forget about what the lights and the scoreboard is saying. Uh, if you thought Tesla was good, uh, Amazon, 1651 needs to build, okay? Here was Amazon, right? So again, same thing. Amazon gapped down, right? Gapped down 70, 80 points, put in the first channel here, right? At 1751, 1651. It took out 61, this thing went up 100 points. Guess what, you know why I'm not happy about it? I didn't do the trade, I missed Amazon. I was in Tesla, I was in NVIDIA, 
and then I got back into NVIDIA, right? I got back into NVIDIA. So the first one I lost like $1.75, right? So I bought it back here. And remember I was talking about it should have went to $21.22. So I bought it back here. My highest sale was up a buck forty, and then I kept the runner. It stopped me out and then went. So I made back some money on the video as well. Uh, but Tesla, I did, I did well with Tesla. I was pretty happy about that. Uh, and then they started going one by one. And Amazon, ballistic, 100 point move on Amazon. Uh, Roku, 75 needs to build. Again, here's the same thing, folks, right? So here's the gap down, okay? Here's the gap down, right? Here's the gap down. It puts in its initial channel right here. You see this, 74.95, everybody, right? 74.95. So 75, it took out 75 and next one right next to the next supply zone, 76 and a half. Again, these are, you're not looking for, you know, if you get them, you get them, but you know, you're not looking for these massive moves. You're just looking for stocks that go from supply to supply to supply. So 75 went there. Netflix absolutely went bonkers. Okay. Went absolutely bonkers. So here is Netflix. It put in its first move from the 13 and a half, 13 and a half area. Again, see gap down. It's the same guys. It's the same thing. Right, you got the gap down. Here's your move right here to 13. Right, you everybody see it? 13, uh, 13, uh, 1390s. Right, it broke this. I mean, the first move was to 320, and then there was another confirmation that went all the way to 334. Just insane, an absolutely insane move. Uh, space, even space worked. Uh, 1290, 13 needs to build. Here was space, right? Here was space. Again, same thing, it gap down, right? Gap down, here's the whole channel right here. Here's the 1290.13, it went to 13.60. Again, not the biggest move, but again, it is what it is. Uh, so NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA, so NetNet -Net actually lost some money on the video, but at least I got some back on the second trade. Uh, BNTX went late, I wasn't even watching this thing. Um, it went to like 53, I wasn't even watching it. So uh, Amazon exploded. This was definitely the trade of the day, okay? We've been watching Zoom, okay? We've been watching Zoom, no joke, for like two weeks. And this is like the pure play. I mean, this is, there's no more pure play than Zoom. You know, video conferencing, kids from school, workers uh, staying at home, all that good stuff. And, you know, for weeks, for weeks, and I'm like, yo, when is this damn thing going to trade already? Like, when is it going to confirm? Like, so this is the daily chart, right? Look how many days. One, two, three, four. But I felt like more than a week. So it was a week. So we knew that 114 area, right? We knew one, that 114 area. And I bought it the first time, right? I bought it the first time. I had two entries in this thing. I bought it the first time at 14. It only went up to 1430 and the future started collapsing. I was like, ugh, it's just taking too long. So I sold it flat. I watched it go down about 70, 80 cents. And then it never sold off. Once it took out the high of the day off that 14, 114.30s, I got long. Uh, I got long all the way from the 30s all the way up and uh, right under 50. So I got long all and the damn thing exploded, absolutely exploded. Uh, my highest sale was 1740s. Great trade. It actually traded as high as to 120. So that was definitely the biggest move of the day, at least for me. Uh, Netflix is going. Um, oh, dear. I mean, again, this is a perfect example. Uh, just everything was going at once. You know, Deer, 130 needs to reclaim. I, I, I looked at it, I go, well, yeah, Caterpillar's green. Watch Deer, 130 needs to reclaim. Look at Deer, right? So here was Deer, here was the 130, right? So it gapped down, okay? Gapped down like everything else, right? Gapped down like everything else. And here's the initial channel here. You see, everybody see that? 130, 130. And it finally reclaimed the 130, went right to the next supply zone of nearly 133. So that was a nice move. Uh, even BYND, for God's sake. I'm like, look, and again, I didn't expect a big move from BYND. And again, this is, I just put this in there. 64.85, 65 needs to build for a quick scalp. You know, it could get to 65.50, 65.70s. Here was BYND, right? Here was BYND right here. Here's the, here's the level, right? Here's the level. It confirmed and it went from 65 and it went to uh, 66 and change. So nice little scalp there as well. Again, Tesla was pretty nice as well. Uh, Tesla going nuts, blah, 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 beyond going, Tesla sick move. I mean, it was just amazing moves. I mean, ZM, just phenomenal, uh, Deer, right? One, it was literally one by one by one. I mean, fantastic moves. I mean, really, really fantastic moves. Um, you know, again, business as usual. Again, guys, we're not in the fear mongering business. We're not in, we're not trying to uh, outsmart the market. Okay. We're just taking the same thing every single day. We're letting the market gap down. Okay. Established levels, 
Once it confirms those levels, we're trying to get a move to the upside. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, interesting to see. Okay, tomorrow will definitely be interesting to see. I I'd like to see if the market does gap down. Uh, does it trap late shorts on that 160 level in the queues? Because if we remount those queues, we might, listen, we might, there's a shot we could get a pretty aggressive rally tomorrow. 1,000, 1,500 points, 2,000 points. I say that so nonchalantly, but that's kind of where the climate we're in. Guys, stay safe. I love you all. I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.